the, the, the lesson. Oh, yeah. When you talk about like, you know, going through your trials, tribulations, the turmoil, the trauma, etc. One thing that I, um, I wasn't aware of until just before this interview was that in 2015, uh, and you mentioned it just before, is that Enter got cancer. Um, now, when that happened, how did that affect, I guess, yourself and then you guys as a group? Um, probably pulled us together. Um, it was a bit of a bit of a shock. We actually just had finished a fundraiser show for a young fellow named Corey. It was called Fight for Corey, and it was about. It was, I think everyone. I think you probably heard about this gig, and everyone was on the on the show. Um, and he actually, unfortunately, R.I.P. passed away. Um, and not long after, yeah, I think he had a bit of a bad back, and he rang me one night, and he he said the doctor thinks, you know, I need to go to the hospital for some scans. And you know, there's something in my back. Um, and when he got to the hospital and did a few scans, they pretty much just told him, you've got, I forget what type of cancer it was, but he had cancer, like a cyst growing in, you know, around his back or his kidney area. Um, and I just remember, yeah, driving down there. Um, you know, obviously, I'm from Penrith. He was down in Hurstville. So I drove down to the hospital. and I, um, It was kind of weird, you know what I mean? Because I said, like I said to you before, we all come from an environment where we think we're going to die young because we're so caught in this negative aspect. Um and obviously it shook his family up and, and his partner and his kids. Um, and he, he got quite sick, man, you know, grateful now that he's gone through remission and he's healthy. Um, but, you know, too, and he'll tell you this, we, we weren't living a very positive lifestyle then. And I think that, you know, in the universe, if you're stressed out, you know, stress is one of the main things that makes us sick, right? Um, you know, and if he hadn't have got those scans, um, I think he hurt his back at work. If he hadn't got those scans, he probably wouldn't have known it was there. So it could have kept growing, it could have got worse. Um, so I think he hurt his back at work. Um, but yeah, look, I think it brought us all together. Um, but yeah, I just remember spending the first night in the hospital and they were trying to kick me out. And obviously, you know, when someone finds out that news, bro, you just want to, you just want to support them. And you just want to lighten them up. You know, I was sort of down there cracking jokes and stuff and, and being that positive sort of bubbly person I can be. Um, but I wanted him to know that, you know, I was there and that, you know, it, if, you know, it's not some bad nightmare where you're caught in hospital and you fucking die tomorrow, um, you know. And what made it more realistic is if we just watched a young person around our age pass away from it, right? So, um, yeah, it was pretty, yeah. Obviously, he went through a lot of to hard times mentally, as, as you would being that sick. Um, but I think, you know, as a person, it made him stronger. And, and as us too, it, it made us stronger and it made us probably a bit more grateful for what we had. Um, um, Music-wise family-wise, all that sort of shit. So, yeah, it was a bit of a battle, but, you know, same thing. I think that God puts you through certain things in life for a reason. Um, now, Enter was, um, like, on the topic of, you know, Trap Runners being a legendary group uh, in Sydney, and Enter was a part of Trap Runners. He was also a part of Sydney Searches, um, which... I guess to a lot of people is like the legendary street rap crew from Sydney. Yeah. When you were when you were coming up, uh, were you tapped into Sydney Searches and did they have an influence on you and how you did your music? Um, I was aware of them, um, but I was very heavily. As I said, I, I guess the Sydney Searches, you know. A lot of it was around that graffiti culture and a lot of, you know, graffiti gangs, man, that come out of Sydney and, and that lingo and, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, the polo culture, um, the get up and where they were. I was sort of probably musically, I was probably more directed towards America, right? Because hustling and earning. There was no one, don't get me wrong, I'm sure Sydney searchers were talking about, you know, earning, but they were talking about earning in a different way, in a different manner. You know, whether it's B&Es, whether it's fucking Ram Raids, all that sort of shit, a different part of the environment that we come from. Because um, you've got to understand, you know, I think people get confused that people think, oh, street dudes, they all do the same thing. Nah, like there's so many different, you know, for me, I always identified as, as, as I'm not a gangster or a shooter or nothing like that. I'm an earner, I'm a hustler. Um, and, and, you know, those guys are probably talking about the different culture of graffiti, um, you know, but, you know, Sky and, 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 and Skis and, and, and Enter, man, 
they were like, you know, like we, we put Skeezo on some shows to DJ for us. Like they were really in tune with hip hop culture, man. Um, so look, I was aware of their music. Um, I probably, even to this day, I gravitate towards what I know and that, um, you know, the I come up on that G-Unit era um, and a lot of lyricists in America. Um, but yeah, I was definitely, definitely aware. And, you know, there's some, some old tracks that you think, you know, this is this is dope, man. This is really raw and uncut. Um, but yeah, obviously in Sydney and in, in Australia around that time, they were like, um, I guess, one of the first to really show that raw, create what gutter rap was or what we label gutter rap as. Um, and there's a few other few other um, people around that were making similar sounds and, and shit like that. But I think that they were just so raw um, and, and rugged, um, and obviously trying to do it themselves as well. Um, and are they the, are they the the group that stamped the term gutter rap? Uh look, I I would say they were one of. Um, look, probably the best person to ask that question is maybe Sesk. Um, and some boys from back around that era or a bit later um, or earlier. See, yeah, I think it's become a whole, you know, because, you know, I think the Americans use the word I'm from the gutter as well in the South, right? Um, you know, so like everything, and, you know, we use the word trap and that, everything stems from hip hop culture from overseas. So there would have been gutter rapper or well, gutter rap or gutter rappers over in the States before we were saying that this is gutter rap. Um, but I think that just sort of, yeah, I think with the Sydney searches, it just suited their sound, you know, it's in the skis and sky and, and enters voice. It was just really raw and it sounded like straight out, straight out of the gutter. Um, so I would, yeah, that would, would have been one of the first to probably stamp that sort of sound. Um, but yeah, you probably have to ask Sesk or enter or, or skis. And, you know, I'm sure there was some people before them around, um, that were using that term. And, uh, you know, another, I guess, another legend of the rap game from Sydney is Forte. And I actually, now that we're talking about it, I think years ago when we did an interview, we briefly touched on the term gutter rap. And he's been another big influence in Sydney. Was he, like, were you aware of him when you started rapping? And was there ever any sort of collaborations or any work done together or... I was, yeah, definitely aware of him. Um, I think he was around that time, you know, probably just after Sydney Searches and, and him and Sesk and that whole Hustle Hard era, um, you know, and he's actually, you know, from the same area as Sesk um, and, you know, knew Sesk's family quite well, actually come to Sesk's mum's funeral um, to pay his respects too. So, look, he's always been around and, and, and quite relevant um, doing that thing. Uh, we haven't really worked on any music collaborations but um yeah look he's another one that potentially you know and i think it was just a, like same thing with the group it was just a collateral collateral sort of thing happening right and then everyone was like oh we're we gonna call this we're gonna call this gutter rap and everyone's like yeah i'm running with it you know what i mean um you know i i think that's because it, it was so raw at that moment it had the stamp on it where now like if people ask me what type of rap do you do i'm like oh, listen, i just make music you can you can label it what you want right um, but back then, because it was so new, and you know, we're coming into the we're coming to the age of the internet um, and all this sort of stuff, and they were using MySpace and before YouTube and shit and all this stuff, you well, know, way before my time, um, doing that. And I guess uh, I'm sure they collaboratively, you know, together they just sort of went, oh yeah, we'll call it Gutter Rap. Um, that's the label we wanted to use. And like around this time, it's from a com- well. I don't know if it's from a completely different bucket, so I could be wrong here, but when we're talking legends and influences from Sydney, from that sort of time period, those are the names that come to mind, which is, I guess, quote unquote, the more street rap stuff. And then you've got Def Wishcast. Is Def Wishcast a name that you were familiar with back then? And, you know, were they a completely different kettle of fish to the names that we were talking about now? Uh, you'd have to ask the one and only, uh, probably Sam, who I've been hassling, I think, speaking to Sam about trying to get Sam to do an interview on here. He's probably from that era, bro. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, Def Wish Cars, obviously I was aware of them, um, you know, coming up through the, through the scene and stuff like that. And, you know, they are from out west as well, Penrith, Blacktown area. Um, maybe, you know, you could potentially look, listen to their music and say that was gutter rap. Um, but I think they come from a much more 
pure hip hop place. Um, you know, the nineties and you know, you've got to talk on, you know, I did a track with Sam and he's talking about snatching gifts in 96. I'm six years old, bro. You know what I mean? So like you're talking, you, you, you're talking such different. Um, and as I said before, is it, is it 10 years for a generation or is it five because of the internet coming in, in the early two thousands, right? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Def Wish cast, you know, would you would potentially if you showed Sydney searches and Def Wish cast, you know, side by side to someone that didn't listen to rap, they'd say, oh, yeah, this is the same genre. Um, you know, but there's so many subgenres that come out of hip hop. Um, I probably wouldn't put them under that banner only because of the error. You know what I mean? Um, if you look at some of their mad old clips and shit like that, man, through the 90s, um, they were just so you know, real Beastie Boys sort of vibes and real hip-hop, pure hip-hop. Um, so, yeah, um, but not same thing. Not saying that them them lads ain't... Um, those lads, for all I know, could have been through the same environments as us, but obviously the the the, um, the, the way that they pronounced it through their music was a little bit different. Um, and, yeah. The, 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 the lesson. Oh, yeah.